All right, whenever you're ready. Bum, 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 ba -da 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 -dum, bum, 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 ba -da 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 -dum, bum, When I wake bum, up, bum, bum, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be bum, the one bum, who wakes up next to you. When I go out, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who goes along with you. When I'm lonely, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who's lonely without you. When I'm dreaming, well, I know I'm gonna dream, I'm gonna dream about the time when I'm with you. But I would walk 500 miles, and I would walk 500 more to be the one who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your door. When I'm working, yes, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who's working hard for you. When the money comes in for the work I do, I'll pass almost every penny on to you. When I come home, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who comes back home to you. And if I grow old, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who's growing old with you. But I would walk 500 miles, and I would walk 500 more to be the one who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your door. When I'm dreaming, well, I know I'm gonna dream, I'm gonna dream about the time when I'm with you. When I wake up, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who wakes up next to you. When I go out, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who goes along with you. When I come home, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who comes back home to you. I'm gonna be the one who's coming home to you. But I would walk by. Good evening, Sonder family. Welcome to your exclusive Sonder Social, our Tranquility Labyrinth. We are so glad to see you this evening. What a way to wind up a long week with a little time for yourself, um, you know, leaning into tranquility, walking a labyrinth and uh, just taking time for your self-care and your wellness. Bailey and I would like to welcome you this evening. My name is Jennifer Ogilvie, and I'm coming to you from the Dallas, Texas area. Now, you should have received an email that will have a link to print um, your own 
labyrinth. No worries. If you did not get it, you will still be able to do a labyrinth practice by just using the screen that you're on. Um, I when we when we actually do the labyrinth meditation, um, I will hold the screen on a labyrinth. So you'll be able to do that then. Or you could maybe Google real quick um, a, a, a quickie one that you could draw to um, use the now we've done a labyrinth uh, social before and we actually drew it on our uh, in our journals and it was a little it took a little bit of time so it can be done but it's a little it's a little tricky we thought maybe having the tranquility labyrinth available would indeed help us lean into tranquility so I see that there's folks um, from everywhere you guys uh, were across the nation um, we're spending our Friday night together we're getting ready to have a great weekend and we're going to embrace this time so Bailey will continue to drop this link in the chat um, for a couple of more minutes just in case we have some of you who are a little late joining I know getting home on a Friday can be crazy and then um, that way you can grab that uh, image. But we're also going to be doing some uh, responses to journal prompts tonight. So it's not all about what goes on to your labyrinth page. Alrighty, so here's our Silk and Sonder guidelines. And I know um, if you are here at the exclusive, chances are you've been to a few uh, Silk and Saunders Social. So you have seen our guidelines. And the number one rule is, you know, this is just a place of love and um, tranquility. It's a safe space. We ask no bullying, no hate speech, take care of your mental health, support one another. We cheer for each other and we hold each other virtually um, as we enter rough times. It's a great community and we're just glad you're here. So as you know, this month's theme is tranquility and the idea of a labyrinth aligns so nicely with tranquility because there is this process involved in walking into a labyrinth, pausing, and then walking back out into the world with hopefully a little bit of calmness and, and renewed spirit. So it really does pair beautifully with our theme this month. So this evening, we're going to be um, doing a few things together. We're going to have an opening reflection. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of the labyrinth and why, why, why are we doing this? What makes a labyrinth so special? Um, we're going to in interact with your own labyrinth, take some time for reflection, and then we're going to practice a labyrinth ritual together. And then I have a closing for you to take with you if you want to expand upon your labyrinth experience. So let's begin together by turning to a notes page in your journal, or if you have uh, maybe your thoughts journals or use the reverse side of your labyrinth, um, wh whatever paper is convenient and handy. And I want you to think and recall back to a trip or a journey um, where you felt tranquil at some point in the in your travels now I laugh because a lot of times you know traveling can be can be crazy but there might be moments that you can latch on to I was thinking about the most recent trip I took and it was my kids and grandkids and and it was more chaotic than tranquil but there were moments of tranquility that um, I can recall um, I want you to think about as you're writing, describe the destination, what you did to get ready, your journey and the experiences you had. And then those experiences question them. What, why did they bring about tranquility? Was it the change in scenery, leaving, leaving one place for another one? Was it the change in routine? Was it the people you were traveling with? Write about those moments that made the trip unforgettable and consider how that um, continues to influence your life. And you might want to reflect all the way. I was thinking about um, a trip I took in high school and it was kind of significant because I realized it was the first time I, I felt kind of like a, almost a grown up, right? And I could see that I had things outside of my home awaiting me. 
Um, so it could be a high school trip. It could be a family reunion trip. It could be your honeymoon. It could be the trip that you took after you got out of high school, or maybe if you went to college, maybe it was that travel. So, so recall a trip that was very meaningful to you. And let's take a few moments to reflect upon that trip. Feel free to share in the chat as you are comfortable.
You have shared some amazing trips and adventures. You're recalling people, places, times in your life. Beautiful. I, I grabbed on some words that I wanted to be sure that I just kind of called out. I, I saw things like adventure, um, picture perfect, solitude, quiet, family, uh, magical, moving at my own pace, disconnecting, peace, uninterrupted time, all those things that come from these powerful trips that if we stop to reflect, we can recall and hopefully we can capture some of those feelings as we lean into a labyrinth practice and, and an experience of that journey in our souls. So let's um, now carry, carry on. I do want to introduce your labyrinth tonight. Um, this labyrinth is called a Chartreuse Labyrinth, and it is um, one that is in um, so oh goodness, my, my mind went blank. Somebody, if you, if you've been there and walked it, let me know, drop it in the chat. It's, it's very ancient. It's in a, um, cathedral and, um, wow, we can't walk it physically. We can walk it with our family. Yes. In France. Yeah. That, that, it's a French pronunciation. I should have known that. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so we're going to actually be walking that this is a finger labyrinth and it is a way to practice the labyrinth mindfulness without having to actually be at a labyrinth. Um, so labyrinths have been around for a long, long time. And I think it's important to kind of talk about like these are some um very old labyrinths that have been discovered. And um the uh you can see I've got three up here on our on our slide. The first one that you see is from kind of the northwest part of Iberia. And it, they're thinking probably um from the Atlantic Bronze Age. So very, very old. The one in the middle that was discovered in Greece, and the one on the right is um, displaying what's called a classical design. Um, it's a seven course classical design and it was discovered in Konos um, at, in around 400, dated to 400 BC. So we know that people have been using the labyrinth as a type of meditation for years and years and years. This meandering path that takes you on a journey and um, we can benefit from following in the footsteps of those who went before us. Um, it, labyrinths can bring about meditation, uh, relaxation, creativity, or even just plain old fun. And, and we actually have a labyrinth at a church in the Dallas area. And I know someone who works there and I was able to take my little grandson and he ran this labyrinth and it was amazing. It was such a great experience uh, for him. Oh, the church is North Haven and it is in Dallas, North Haven in Dallas. And they have a labyrinth garter, garden. And yes, Lyric, I was just going to say that there is a, you can just Google Google like labyrinth locator and they will show you where they are all over um, and lots of hospitals will have them public parks and churches um, so so cool so cool to, to look at um, and then there's the labyrinths that you can um, just do at home and I was sharing with Bailey I actually traced the labyrinth on a on a window um, on to some fabric and I embroidered a little labyrinth path and I, I can't find it because I hid it. It's for my grandson for Christmas because he loves the labyrinth and it calms him. And so um, I kind of did it. It looks sort of like the one over there on the upper right, but you can make simple labyrinths. You see the ones in the upper middle or the kind of the middle top section. That, that's just like a glued colored one yarn. And then you, there's ways to add texture. You, there, you can buy labyrinths. They really are a great calming tool. Additionally, I discovered this the last time we did a labyrinth. This is an app called Labyrinth Journey, and you can put it on your iPad or your um, cell phone and your tablet. And um, what it does is when you trace it with your finger, it actually lights up. And you can see I partially did 
um, the one that's over there on the far right. And it just follows your trail. And then when you get to the middle, it, it's, um, it just kind of explodes with these soft, gentle little fun things and um there's soft music playing and it is a very good centering if you you know if you're sitting waiting on something it's a good way to sit down and just kind of center yourself in that moment so um that's kind of cool so now you guys have seen mazes before just a reminder that a labyrinth is not a maze because as you notice in the maze, there are these dead ends and um, they're, they're blind dead ends. You just kind of walk around and you, there's a way in and a way out and it's meant to trick you. That is not what a labyrinth is. A labyrinth, it can look like a maze. Um, however, they don't have blind passages or wrong turns or dead ends. Um, in other words, they're not made to frustrate you like mazes are kind of made to frustrate you. It's a single winding unobstructed path and it goes from the outside, you enter, you wind, you get to the center and then you go back out again. So the decisions of which way to go have been made for you and then that allows you to focus on contemplation rather than navigation. It's just like when we say at the coloring socials, you're focusing on your process not the product. So the point of the maze is to find the center. The point of a labyrinth is to find your center. And I love that you guys are sharing um, where you know there are labyrinths. So I would like to take a few moments now to kind of center ourselves since the labyrinth, that's the point of the labyrinth is to center ourselves. And um I am going to let you sit with your labyrinth, grab your colored pencils or your markers, and just kind of, you can kind of own it, make it your own. Now, I, I've got some examples to show you. This is from the labyrinth that we did where we, we drew it on um, our journals, but you can see how folks just, there's a sunbeam, there's rainbow, there's different colors of uh, the pathway um, I, I, we're going to just take some time to center, to breathe, to kind of make it very personal. And as you do this, this is going to get us ready for the rest of our labyrinth journey. Now, these are some quotes that I pulled just about those journeys in life that you might want to add to your labyrinth. Um, but uh, let's see. Yes, Francis, I will go back. Yes, I will go back to the to the slides. So um, I'm going to just put on some music. Is this the one, Francis? Let me know. I'm trying to, is it this one? I'm waiting for a yes in the chat. Um, but we're going to uh, just, I'm going to give you a good little chunk of time to just kind of get personal with, with your labyrinth and, and to color that in. And while you're doing that, take some really deep, breaths like you would at a coloring um a coloring social um are we just decorating now or tracing ratio um melissa we're just we're not gonna you know you you're you're create you're just making it your own making it personal and if you don't have it printed out and you'd like to turn to a coloring page you could do that or you could um, maybe Google how to do a seed labyrinth, which is a simpler style, and you could write that in an actual journal page. Um, but we're just going to take some time to kind of center ourselves so that we can get ready for our labyrinth practice. So I'll be home to, I'll be back to check in with you in just a moment. Um, I'm getting ready to play Take Me Home. I almost said I'll be home. <laughs>
Okay, so we took just a few minutes to kind of center ourselves. The reason I wanted you to engage with your labyrinth was so that you could kind of um, breathe and have a moment to just sort of gazing upon this labyrinth, getting familiar with it. I think it did cause some stress because some folks are like, this isn't vibing the colors I've chosen. I'm I'm kind of doing a sunbeam. It's kind of hard to see on on the screen. But anyway, I, I just wanted you to have some time to kind of center so that your head would be in a calmer space as we lean into the practice of our labyrinth and, and how we're going to use it this evening. So on the back of your labyrinth page or on that notes page, I want you to just stop for a moment now that we've taken a moment to center and draw or write about your thoughts or worries or emotions that have been occupying your mind lately. August is kind of that crazy time of year. Um, so many changes, right? And so just almost assume that this process is almost that of a, a brain dump. Just what is on your mind that is standing in the way of you feeling tranquility? What have you been overthinking or worrying about the things that you, you know, that just are keeping your mind going. And it's, this is going to be just a chance to kind of get this on paper and do some reflection. And we're going to um, take a good chunk of time to write about the things that are on our hearts. And then I'll come back and check, check in with you. And we're going to take the things that we are putting here and we're going to use those to lean into that mindfulness practice.
There is so much power in putting pen to paper, just letting those thoughts out. Um, I hope that you were able to kind of do some releasing as you tackled this journal prompt. Um, sometimes it can be really tough to get get deep with with things that are going on or in our lives that that just aren't serving us or that we don't know what to do or we don't know that we have any choice in the matter. So I want to um, encourage you now to just stop for a second and we're going to um, do our labyrinth practice, but we're going to talk about it first and kind of do it together. And then I'm going to put on some music for you to take these burdens, these issues, these things that are on your mind and walk your labyrinth and release. So the first step in using a finger labyrinth or really any labyrinth, but when on our finger labyrinth is, is called the release step. That's the first part. So what you're going to do is I'm going to, again, ask you to, um, oh yes, Tina, I'll just say this. Um, Tina asked to Bailey and myself, if she can use the recording later. Yes. All of you will get a link to this recording because it is um, an exclusive. It won't be on the regular YouTube link, but you will have access to that. So that's a great question. Um, so I want you to just sit quietly, still yourself. Hopefully we've had that time to do so. Take some deep breaths as you begin to enter the labyrinth. And then you're going to take your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, you're going to use your left hand, get your pointer finger. The reason we use our non-dominant hand is that it helps us really focus on our walk, our literal walk on that paper, um, because we have to, you know, kind of plug into that, make our, our brain sort of fire a different way. It allows us to pay more attention to the journey. So you use your non-dominant hand, your pointer finger. It might feel awkward at first. Um, and, and also, if this is your first experience with a labyrinth, it could feel awkward. I'm going to encourage you to do it a lot until it becomes something that, that brings you that comfort, helps you with that settling and that mindfulness. Anytime you do something new, it can feel a little funny, right? And, and so I'm going to encourage you to, to try this more than just tonight. All right, so then you put your finger from the non-dominant hand at the entrance of the labyrinth, and you're just going to slowly trace your finger through the labyrinth, working toward the center. This is called the release part of the labyrinth. The next step in our labyrinth is receiving. So as you navigate you're going to just through that time, you're releasing, you're becoming aware of your breathing. You are hopefully relaxing and moving at your own slow pace. There's nothing to rush through. When you get to the center, it is a place of pause, of reflection. Just stay there, hang out there as long as you need to. You walk to that center of the labyrinth and then you rest and you receive. And then when you're ready, the third part is our return. And we will slowly again with the non-dominant hand return through our path. We go back out into the world. So each labyrinth is different. Hopefully you were able to work on yours to really make it your own, to own it. And um, you may feel nothing this time around, or you may be quieted enough to have some things pop in your head. Um, listen to your body, take the time that you need. This is a very personal experience. Um, so I'm going to put on a nice chunk of music and you'll slowly re walk through, walk in, enter, release, pause and receive, and then return. There probably won't be much going on in the chat. Think about those things you wrote about and how can you 
take that into your labyrinth and maybe leave that behind. And yes, Madura, it is hard to use that non-dominant hand. It makes you concentrate on the things that you need to address.
anxiety. So I, I want to encourage you to, to hang on to this and give it another go or two or six. And, and there's been some comments. Yes. It's very different when you physically walk a big labyrinth, right? Your whole body's moving. It does take some concentration. India was laughing. She said, I've started over six times. Is that okay? Isn't, isn't that like life? That's what's so beautiful about this is that the labyrinth really is reflective of the path that we take and we may have to start over. You never made it to the center. I bet you will, India. You'll have to tell me in Sonder Club. I made it. I made it. So again, if you're new to the labyrinth, I want to encourage you to give it a go. Try it. See, see what it does for you. You can um, even order, you know, a pillow or a poster or something. Somebody is going to, what was it, Suzanne? I think said, I'm going to do Elmer's glue around it and make it a little more texturing. And yes, Casey, if you move too fast and you get lost, you get, and there there you go, it's a lesson. It, it This truly is about slowing down, releasing and receiving and returning. I'm, I'm proud of you guys for giving this a whirl. I'm going to give you an, an extension of this practice and then we will wrap things up. Um, there is also a process called writing the labyrinth and you need two copies of the labyrinth. And the first one you title writing in and the second one you title writing out. And so if you have a problem or an issue or something that's just on your heart and you're trying to figure out a solution, you do exactly what you did today with your finger, except you start writing and you begin at the entrance and you just write about whatever it is that's in your head or on your heart and you work toward the center. Now you may not fill the whole thing in. So when you finish, you just put your pen down and with your non-dominant hands so that you're paying attention or with maybe a tool like we were saying if that doesn't work maybe maybe just grab a tool because then that that concentration is gonna um, focus in that path you you draw to the center all righty and that's that receive part and just hang out there with this problem that you've written down and then when you're ready you will do your writing out labyrinth start in the center and write about the things that come to your head that kind of helps you think about how you're going to solve that issue or that problem or the thing that's on your heart, what you can do, how you can let, let that burden go and then stop writing. And you would complete the return journey with your writing utensil and just write all the way out of the path. So the writing in and writing out. And yes, Melissa, it could, it could be written like a prayer. Um, it could be a letter to yourself and then a response. Um, so, you know, you'll find out what works for you. So I had mentioned earlier that you will get a copy of this um, recording. It's not going to be on our YouTube page um, because it is an exclusive. You are also entered in the self-care giveaway for being at an exclusive social. We have a new end slideshow here with or slide with um, some QR codes. We've got the refer a friend deal that's still going on. You get $10, they get $10. But also there is the QR code if you would like to upgrade to an annual subscription and save yourself a good chunk of change, you can scan that QR code. And of course, we want to see you in Sonder Club. So check out that app if you're not already part of the Sonder Club. Now, I personally, and I think Bailey will agree, we want to see how you made this labyrinth your own tonight. So post that picture in Sonder Club. And then if you have a reflection or something you want to try because you've thought about embracing this labyrinth practice, please drop that in that, in that Sonder Club as well. So let's see. And Deborah's asking, is writing in and writing out? Let's see. I'm sorry. Writing in and uh, writing in, writing about the problem and writing out the solutions. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Or you, or the ideas you have. I'll, I can hold these slides while we exit our time together. I'm so proud of you for carving out this time on a Friday night. I want to encourage you to give this labyrinth idea a go. Maybe try it on your phone. Um, and, and then you've got it with you at all times. If you're in a meeting, you can maybe do the labyrinth under the table. So 
You can stay calm and tranquil. Thank you for prioritizing your self-care and for joining Bailey and me in our Sonder Social tonight. I wish you guys a tranquil weekend and I hope to see you next time. Oh, my God.